Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers unboxing video. I got it right. Now before we start, I've got something to show you. It's something that I have created. You know all the letters you send me in these parcels? Well, I've created this Fan Mail Volume 1. I'll tell you why it's Volume 1, because it's nearly full. I'm going to be moving on to Volume 2 soon. But all the letters that are sent to me, I keep. And I'm going to refer to these later on when I write my memoirs in about 40 years. So I'll just show you here, you might recognize your letters in here, maybe. I'll just flick through a few quickly. Oh look, remember that one? Yeah, there, there's stuff there, there's uh, Christmas cards and, uh, and get well soon and all that. I haven't even been sick and you know, all this sort of stuff. Look, there's even that picture of the Jaguar there. There's all sorts of goodies in there. So just to let you know that nothing goes to waste and I keep everything because if truth be known, I'm a bit of a hoarder. So there we go. I'll put that back down there. So there you go. A little bit of information for you. Fan mail, volume one, volume two coming soon. Right now I've got an exciting unboxing today. Loads of different parcels. So this first one here is from Richard Goulston from Auckland in New Zealand. And that is the first one from New Zealand. And it feels like a picture or a book maybe. So I'm going to open it up. So here we go with my X-Acto knife. Actually, this is blunt too. What's going on? Ooh. I'm going to have to snap a blade or two off this. It is a book. A skinny book, hardback cover. And it's, wow! I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> it's the Matchbox Annual, no less. The Matchbox Annual. And it looks like it's in fantastic condition. Look at that. Let's have a look at this letter. Right, and it says, Hi Marty, hope you don't have this already. I got it in 1979 when I was nine years old. Love your videos. Thanks, Richard from New Zealand, Auckland. And there's a picture of Kevin. And he's got Kevin point, an arrow pointing down. Ah, uh, that's good. I like that. All right, let's have a quick look in here. Oh, there's a game, cross-country car rally game. What else we got? A matchbox quiz. Oh, we'll be having fun with that after the show. <laughs> what else? Oh, there's a story here about Mr. Matchbox or something. Oh, this is great. Oh, look at this. Models of yesteryear. Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. A fire at the warehouse. Oh, it's like an adventure story there for boys. This is great. I'm going to look forward. This is going to go, this is going to be my new toilet book. You know, you're sitting there and read, read something. Right? That's great. So thanks, Richard. And I'll be putting the pin in the first one for New Zealand very soon. Excellent. Now, number two today is a long one, quite heavy. And it's from Stan Flatters in the UK. Grantham is from. Now, it looks like Border Control have been into this one as well. The top's open. But it's probably just rough handling by the postie. There's a few different things in here. I would say that's a car. Oh, and that's a big car. And there's some workshop supplies. More brushes. Those are great. Oh, and a letter. Okay, we've got six brushes. Assorted abrasive brush set. Excellent. Wear goggles and a mask when you're using them, it says on the back. Hello again from, again. That's right. I had one from Stan once before. From Grantham, and it'll be in my book. I folded the letter and made sure it was in the centre of the box this time. Oh, that was the guy who I cut his letter up. I really look forward to your videos and have learnt a lot from them. Unboxings are great. Please keep them coming. Not sure if you want the record breakers, but you've got them anyway. What's the record breaker? I spent time looking for some tyres for Thrust 2, only to find out that it didn't have any. See how you get on with the little brushes. The nylon ones last longer than the toothbrushes. I'm sure they would. <laughs> All the best to you and your Stan Flatters. Alright Stan, now what's this cryptic clue here about record breakers? Not too sure. What have we got? Oh, this is a nice Super King thing. Looks like a big one. I'm going to put that in my elastic band collection. Oh, this is a... A bulldozer with no tracks, but it looks great. Oh, that's broken. 
Oh, there's some hydraulic rams there. It's been grotty. It's been played with in the sand pit, that's for sure. And left out in the sun, as you can see, the hook's all bleached. But I reckon that will come up a treat. It looks like there's something missing. Maybe there's a guy there with a peg up his bum that sits in there. Makes sense. So that's going to be good. What does it say on that? Matchbox king size. I think it says K6, maybe. Uh, Caterpillar excavator. There you go. That's what that is. So that's a great one. Guess what? I don't think I got that one. Another elastic band. Another two elastic bands. Oh, today's my lucky day. <laughs> oh, wow. What is this? This must be the record breaker. Look at that. What a rip snorter. Whatever that means, I don't know. It's made in England by Lido. It's a Lido or Ledo. And what does it say on there? Bluebird. It's a, a racing car from the... I'm guessing the 50s, maybe. No doubt you'll correct me on that one. And this here, oh, check that out. I've never seen that before. <laughs> this is a beautiful little model. Look at that. It looks like maybe it's got tyres missing off the back or off the front, unless it didn't have any tyres. Ah, that's what he said in his letter. I spent time looking for tyres for Thrust 2, only to find out it didn't have any. Well, that's what that is, Thrust 2. They're good, aren't they? Very unusual. Can't be doing anything with them other than saving them for a rainy day to get out and play with. Oh, wow, there's another one. He's excelled himself here. These are great. Spirit of America Sonic 1. So I wonder if that went faster than the speed of sound. That's great. Look at that. It's unplayed with condition. Awesome. I'm really loving those. Another... Can I, am I dreaming? Another elastic band and another model. It is an old timer. Look at this. Osram lamps. Wow, there's some real gems here. This is an AEC from 1918, 1916 to 1921. It's a number six and it says, mm, oh God, I need more light over here. It is made by Leslie. Made in England by Leslie. Check those out. What a fantastic set. I really, really, really appreciate you parting with those because especially if you've had them since you were nine, that means a lot to me. Okay. All right, we are kicking some goals. This one here, handle with care, fragile. A lot of tape on this one. It's hopefully this knife will make short work of it. And this is from an unknown person, or persons. I've got to get this out of a bit of a knife. Ah, oh, it's no good. It's a box opener. <laughs> There's the clown's wig. <laughs> That's just some packaging material for my packaging material museum. Opening soon. Wow, there's all sorts of little bits and pieces in here. I don't know what to throw out and what to keep. Don't want to throw out the baby with the bath water. What have we got here? Loads and loads of goodies. Wow, some heavy ones. Heavy haulers. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Just quickly. Oh, it's from Dixie in Ilford, London. Good day, Dixie. Dear Marty, loving your every video you make, be it unboxing or the amazing job you do, restoring Leslie Matchbox vehicles back to their former glory. Keep up the entertaining hard work. Since watching your very first posts on YouTube, I've been hunting high and low for Lesney Matchbox models. You have started a very exciting hobby for me. Oh, good. I have yet to attempt a restore. However, the hunt alone is keeping me busy. I've included some of my finds here for you to enjoy. Oh, that's generous of you. I've included some of the late 1970s Lesney Matchbox models, which in my opinion, were their last great pieces of work. You will also find an original 1960s American Ford in need of your magic touch. Would love to see this restored. Finally, I've included a bigger model, which isn't Lesney or Matchbox. I wonder if you recall the brand as a kid in England. They were a very budget rival to the Lesney Matchbox series, yet they still had something about them. Would be also great to see it restored. Uh, missing a rather large piece by the looks of it. Hope you enjoy them all. Keep your videos coming, always guaranteed a laugh and a very worthwhile watch from your channel. P.S. Keep the letter short so you didn't cut it in half. Aha, right, thanks Dixie. Let's have a look. What is this? Okay, this is a matchbox car transporter. And it's got toy. <coughs> look at that. It's got, 
It's like, see the wheel on the truck? Look at all the size of the wheel on the car. I tell you what, that is not their finest piece. It's totally out of scale by the looks of it. Anyway, something different, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> what else we got? Uh, oh, here's a nice little one here. It's all shiny, a bit, a bit sort of Hot Wheelsy looking. It's a, it's a tricked up skip, skip transporter, whatever you call it. And what is it called here? It's a skip transporter. No, I made that up. It's a matchbox, all right, super fast. It's a skip truck. There we go, it's close. Skip truck, I've never seen that. <laughs> okay, there we go again. Look at the engine, it's gold plated. You don't see those any anymore, do you? Since the price of gold went up. Oh, that's nice. There's a, I don't know, there's various names for this. Garbage truck, rubbish truck, dust cart. Oh, it's got some good little functioning parts here. Look, there's a compactor in the back there. And, oh, it's in good condition. And it is definitely a matchbox, super fast refuse truck from 1979. Ah, oh, similar colors, look. It's a bit of a theme happening here. Now, this here is a little beauty. This is in perfect condition. And there's something about it, I like it. It's camper, again from 1979. And that's plastic, but it's quite cute. It's got uh, all sorts of details cast on it. Spare tire on the back and a number plate too. I'll have to show that to you. Now, what's this one? Ooh, it's a, it's one of those. Uh, jack lift. Jack lift there you go that's what a jack lift looks like that's crazy isn't it now this one here is a matchbox an old school one like the first generation maybe american station wagon i think i've got one of those i was going to do it when i did the cadillacs up but i thought i'd save it for later so now i've got two i could do two at the same time which would be nice and the last one today from mr anonymous called dixie from ilford in london is a budgie model. I have heard of budgies before. My father used to uh, breed them, in fact. <laughs> I remember the color of the beaks are different, male and female. The males are blue. The, I don't think the females are pink, are they? I just remember the males are blue, I think. Anyway, this is a budgie model. Amazing what they can turn out with their little beaks and wings, isn't it? But it uh, looks like, yeah, there might be something missing there. Maybe uh, there's nothing supporting that. You know what I mean? It's very sort of iffy. But that looks like a Thames Trader cabin to me. What do you reckon? So, very nice, Dixie. Thanks very much. This is quite an unusual addition to my uh, toy museum, which is opening soon. It's going to be next door to the packaging material museum. Clear the table. Get on to the next one. Dixie from London. How you going, mate? No. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah, I was going to do an English accent. What, you said good day, mate? No, what did I say? How you going, mate? All right? Yeah, you're shit at <laughs> Okay, that was good. That was all good so far. All good. Now, this is a big one, but it feels like an empty box. And it says fragile. No, it doesn't really come. I can do that all day long. What's in this one? I think it's some packaging material. And it's from Ham Hall. From West Midlands in the UK. And this is always very exciting. Not knowing what's in them. There's a bit of local news to read. Well, I might keep that in the spray booth. Oh look, look at this here. Something something homemade by the looks. Walsall Wood, West Midlands. Pam. Hello, Marty and Kevin. Just a small present for Kevin. I thought he might like a family of his own. Oh, so here they are. Hmm. Kevin, God bless him. Actually, I've got to go visit him tomorrow. I've got to take him into the new uh, more underwear and toothpaste he asked for. Uh, oh, this is nice. Homemade. Bit of a, uh, what do you call that? I don't know what you call that. Knit one, pearl one. Oh, look at this. 
<laughs> Where am I? You're in Australia. Am I? Yes. Is it good here? It's not bad. Oh, I felt sick in here. I've been in here for just six weeks. It's good to be out. Look at that. That's so cute. It's got a baby girl, koala, and a funky... F Kimmy? It's Kimmy and Kyle. K Kimmy and Kylie. So which one's Kimmy and which one's Kylie? That's the question. Oh, funky friends. Hmm, doesn't say. But that's great, isn't it? Look at that. Look at those eyes. <laughs> and they got somewhere to sit. There you go. I'll get you some gum leaves in a minute, all right? I bet you're hungry being sitting in that box all that time. Alrighty, that's nice. Thank you, Pam. As you can see, I'm smashing through these foaming boxes today. Well, I'm cutting through them, actually. <laughs> and this one is another one from England. Devon. Beautiful place of, of in, in England. Holiday. I used to go holidaying there when I was a kid. Loved it. And this is from Ian Hayes. Devon in England. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Look at this. I'm liking this. Oh, holy crap. What is this? Spare parts. Brilliant. Tracks. Replacement rubber tracks for Dinky. Dinky. Oh, wow. Wow. They keep coming. How's that? It's a fairly big lot of bits and bobs there. Let's have a look here. I'm going to need another folder. Put all these letters in on. Right. Ian Hayes from Plymouth, Devon, England. Hi Marty. I bought these old Matchbox cars from a car boot sale the weekend and thought you might be interested in restoring them. There is also some spares that you might find useful. I've enjoyed watching your YouTube channel. Keep up the good work. Kind regards, Ian. Well, thanks Ian. Oh, look at that. The blue tractor. Can't get enough of these agricultural vehicles. They're just great fun, aren't they? That one needs a 3D printed steering wheel and some replacement tires and it'll be as good as new. Well, what else have we got here? Oh, oh dear. This one's a little bit wrecked. The wheels are all, nearly said it, busted. Uh, super fast Porsche. That ain't super fast anymore. Sorry, folks. That ain't going nowhere. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I must experiment with these wheels. I've seen it on the Hot Wheels channels, but I've never had a bash yet. So there's always something new to learn in this hobby, which is great. Now, this thing here. Oh, wow. This is like a wacky ambulance that's all warped and broken and smashed. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Oh, like I said, you can never have enough blue tractors. Here's another one. Only this one is a variant in that it's blue and yellow. I did remember reading about these coming out in different color schemes. But look at that blue, completely different to that blue. Well, there you go. Whoever was mixing the paint up probably got the sack that week. They are exactly the same. 39 and 39, yeah. They're exactly the same, but different. Mm. Oh, it's another blue tractor. No, it's not. Oh, this is what that's supposed to look like. Mm. I've never actually seen one of these complete. That's quirky, isn't it? Look at that color. Green metallic and fluoro orange and chrome plated seats. Wouldn't be very comfortable. You keep slipping off every time you put the brakes on. <laughs> oh! Oh, another refuse truck. Uh, refuse truck, it's the same. It's the same as that other one from Stan. Was it from Stan? It was, wasn't it? That's what it's supposed to do, look. To push the, mm, expel the rubbish. Hmm, didn't pick up on that before. Uh, here we have another, oh dear. Yep. Mm, uh, matchbox. Uh, red. Drag you are, get it? Because it's a drag racer, it's a Jaguar, it's a Draguar. Quite clever, aren't they? Look at that oval cockpit sort of thing. I wonder if that's like on the real thing. Anyway, the motor's missing. So that won't be, that will be going as fast as that Porsche, I'm thinking. Uh, that one's particularly nice. I like it because it's like, there's nothing wrong with it. 
It's a bit quirky too. Oh, wow. Talk about quirky. JR. This belonged to JR. JR Ewing from Dallas. Look, he's painted his name all over it. It's the Opal Diplomat. Mmm. Bonnet's missing. Always a problem. Nice detail in the engine compartment there, though. That's quite cool. One, two, three, four, five. To go. Oh, the camper van. Wow. I love that colour. Look at that colour. It's great to have an original colour to, to match. That's... I've, I've done two of the, three of these, maybe? And I don't remember the colour looking like that. Once again, whoever mixed the other paint up, he was probably in charge of this one as well. This one here looks like a John Player Special or something. Somebody's kids painted it black all over. It's the Formula One Matchbox Series number 34, made in 1970. And it's still kicking. Look at that. But uh, I don't think that the paint scheme on it does it justice. Oh, this is the little boat trailer. Wow, all the wheels are wonky for some reason. What happened? Did Matchbox kind of drop the ball when it came to their wheels? Those, those look so weak and flimsy, it's not funny. Look at them, they're all wibbly wobbly. I think I've got the boat for that too, somewhere. I'll have to dig it out. Oh, now this is a nice oldie. I do like this one. It's the, uh, what is it, compressor truck or something. Thames Trader compressor truck. Yeah, there's a the Thames Trader cab again. Uh, a lot of detail, that one's bent. It's got like a bit of a, a bend at the weak point right there behind the cabin. Like some kids stood on it. So that will be challenging to straighten that out without cracking it. But it's a good model. I might have a bash at that one pretty soon. I like it. It's got double axles on the back there. Double wheels. Two left. Oh, this kid loved painting them. Or oh, whoever owned them. I might do these from a car boot sale, weren't they? So they could be sourced from many different homes. Uh, there's another uh, bulldozer. And that one there is the uh, the number. Uh, just for all those of you who are interested, it's the number 16 case bulldozer. Quite nice detailed engine also. It would come up good with the tracks and everything in the right spot, in the right colours. Gonna have to do a uh, what would you call that? Construction vehicle special. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? And uh, this one here is white. It's a uh, Ford Galaxy. I didn't even recognize it because the roof's missing. <laughs> Somebody's turned it into a convertible. <laughs> it's got no windscreen, no roof. Might be for an interesting custom, wouldn't it? All right, there's a nice little selection there. One, two, 14 cars. And these are rather cool. These tires, you know what? I'm going to find it. Something to, there are 12 tyres in there. Let's have a look. There's more than 12 tyres. Look how many tyres there are. These are great. So these are replacement rubber tracks for the Centurion Dinky tank. So they're pretty cool. If you've got a tank without tracks, they would be very, very hard to find, I'm sure. Uh, these are 17 mil. Tires, all different ones, 20 mil, some other ones there, and uh, 17 mil, and an odd one in a bag there, which is a 15 mil. And all these parts are from Kenneth Gray Spare Parts in Aberdeenshire. 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 I didn't even know there was a place called Aberdeenshire. Anyway, they are great and really come in handy. I'm going to get myself. Some more spare parts drawers because I'm, I'm starting to fill them up you know so I'm gonna need to keep these in a special drawer so that I can find them when I need them right how many more have we got just two this one is from Brian Alloway Chatswood in New Jersey no New Jersey how do they say New Jersey I can't do an American accent can I New Jersey <laughs> I bought myself a new jersey. <laughs> wow, it's a big box. And the letter, what the heck is that? Dear Marty, greetings from the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, USA. Home of the Jersey Devil. Love your YouTube channel. Stay strong. 
Mm. I hope you find the cameras interesting. Oh, wow, more cameras. From Brian Alloway. Wow, Brian, like I say, I do hope you're watching because this is great. I've got to move all these books of Julie's out to the shed <laughs> to make room for all this stuff. Look at that. Actually, this is two cameras. That is a camera in a box. And look at this thing here. It's a massive. This was a pocket-sized camera in its day. <laughs> it's a little portable camera for taking like random snaps as you're walking around on holiday. This has got some age to it. Look at it. It's a Polaroid 220. How's that? <laughs> and obviously some research required. How do I open it? I don't know and I'm scared to break something. Oh, it's hinged. So this hinges down somehow. Hey! Ooh, look at, oh, look at this. This looks rather special. Looks like that deploys forwards. Oh, I'm going to have to do some research on this and work out exactly how it works. Because it looks like this wall. Oh, hang on. Whoa. Look at that. Smile. I can see you. That is a beautiful looking thing. Look at that. That must be the world's first Polaroid or something. It's crazy. And it, all compact, pocket sized. <laughs> I'm going to put it back together now. Careful. Beautiful. Look at that. It's even got the instructions manual in there or something. So that's great. That is awesome. And that is going to go in this cupboard <laughs> when I've emptied all the books. Now, that's one. Uh, what can possibly get any better than one camera, but two cameras? This looks old as well, look there. The strap's all damaged. Very, very fragile. Oh, it's another Polaroid camera. And I do actually remember seeing these. Hang on a sec. Look at that. It's a flash. Flash cube. It's huge. Imagine that be like a lightning bolt going off. And I do remember these from, when I, from my youth. Everyone who was anyone had one of these. I used to push that. I think I might not have even had one. And the, the thing would come out here, the picture. And then everyone would go. Like it made it develop faster. But it never did. But they did it anyway. She felt it was the right thing to do. And there you go. Oh, it's all blurred. Hang on, I'll take another one. <laughs> and after about the fifth shot, you'd have a good one. And that looks like that bolt's on there. It's massive. Oh, it clips on over the over the viewfinder and sits up on there like that somehow. Uh, it's just a monstrosity of a camera, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah. Once again, pocket sized. You've got to have cargo pants though to wear to carry one of these around. It looks like there's a battery compartment here. I'm curious. Oh, there is no batteries in there. And you know what's good about it? There's absolutely no sign of any corrosion. So I might give that a try later. It looks like it just takes double A's. So that might be fun. Brilliant. Excellent. I uh, can't wait for you to see that up close. I think you're going to be impressed. It's in great nick too. Awesome. I'm going to go into my camera museum. <laughs> Brian Alloway from Chatsworth in New Jersey. Thank you so much for sending me those things. I tell you what, they wouldn't have been cheap. Uh, in the day, they were cutting edge technology and it's great to see it here in the future looking back and thinking, how did we manage with these things before mobile phones came on the market? Amazing. The last one for today. Uh, oh, it's a letter. It's from someone in Middlesex, UK. From Colin Patterson. Middlesex, England. Hi Marty, thanks for your hard work and amazing entertaining videos. Here are some bits that I have got together for you and I hope that you find them useful. There is not much restoration needed here, a few paint scuffs and the missing windscreen on the blower Bentley, but I tried to find your vehicles that you may not have because I like to hear you say, I haven't got that one. Mm. Also in the small box there are some old grey type wheels, oh that come in handy. As I saw in the video that you did about the first models that you restored, you painted the old wheels. Well, mate, these you can use as is or as a pattern to 3D print. 
I came across this reproduction poster which shows early models and boxes and thought you might like that. Oh, that sounds exciting. I will keep my eyes open around boot sales and charity shops for anything that I may find and send them on. Enough gab from me. Keep up the good work and beware the bear from hell. Best of luck to you and yours, Colin. P.S. I forgot to put this letter in the box. Oops. Okay, that's fine. We got here in the end. Excellent. Ah, how do I open this? Look at it. It's cocooned in tape. Oh, wow, this is full of goodies. Oh, look at that. Look at this interesting packaging material. It's like sausages there. Oh, we got this here. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Let's have a look. What do we got? Oh, we got sausage packaging, which I've never seen before. First up, there's a genuine box here with something in it, a genuine thing in it, no doubt. That's lovely. Look at that. Models of yesteryear. Y5, 1929 Bentley. So have a look. Shall I open it up and have a look? Think about it, don't you? Ooh. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, what a shame. There's something missing. What is that? A windscreen or something assembly. Now I'm going to have to try and get that fixed. That's a great little model, though. Look at that. I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> there you go. You got your wish. That's beautiful, look at it. I wish I had one of those in real life. That would be awesome driving around in that. Bentley. Whoa, what's this? Check this one out. This is another beauty. Again, I'm getting there. Wow. Oh, it's quite heavy. I do like that. What is that? Is that a friction motor in there? No. Just, it just feels like there's a friction motor in there because it's so heavy. So, Robin, the new starch. Cool. Never seen one of those before. <laughs> that is brilliant. I love it. It's great. It doesn't need anything doing to it. Now let me see. It is a matchbox. 1989. Oh, so it's, it's fairly late. Oh, I've never seen that. <laughs> Stop saying that. Oh, that's beauty. Guess where that's going? Straight into the display cabinet of exotic vehicles. The exotic vehicle section. Right, here's something else that uh, is unusual. It's a toy tractor cab convoy, le convoy or something. It's in French. Uh, collect them all, collection les tout or something. Uh, so, that's crazy. Never seen that before. Again. What's going on here? Ah, oh, there we go. That's the wheels he's talking about. Oh, look at those. They're brilliant. Oh, I feel like they're made of lead. They're very heavy. They are fantastic. I haven't got any of those, but I have now. Thanks to Colin Patterson. Those are great. Once again, with the other tyres and all that stuff, I'm going to put them in my little little drawers, and that'd be great. When I need a tyre, I'm going to have one. Or a wheel, even. What have we got here? This looks like an old vintage thing. And it is an old vintage thing. Wow. Again, it's all new to me. Uh, this looks great. I love the details in that. Wow. Look at that. Amazing to think. People used to drive around in these things. Not that one. Obviously, it's a toy, but in the real, the real size one they did. Oh, the seat's loose. It's a Packard. Models of yesteryear Packard. Landolet. Or Landolet. From 1912. Wow. Uh, to think people would, the driver would sit in the front and get hit with all the hail and snow and the posh toff would sit in the back and he'd get hit with hail and snow as well. <laughs> but if he was getting uncomfortable he could climb in the front in there like in that little metal box and hide. <laughs> Thank goodness they invented roofs. <laughs> I take my hat off to the man who invented the roof. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> oh, well, you know, I've got this too. <laughs> there we go. This is going to be good. Who is this again? <laughs> Colin, isn't it? It's Colin. Okay. This looks like a interesting thing. And you know what? I'm going to be getting a frame. 
Let me show you a little trick, all right, just briefly. I wrap that around these two fingers, right? Now I go abracadabra, caliber zoo, and it jumps around these two fingers. Do you like that? So you didn't know, that's another bow in my string. Another string on my bow. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look at that. What a great little thing. I'm going to get a frame for this. I'm going to frame it, stick it up in the hobby room. It's all the original A models by the looks of it. And their cover art. It's beautiful. It's a great thing. And I've never seen one before. <laughs> But I have now. It's great, isn't it? I like that. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> what was that off of Dumb and Dumber? I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, there's so many more to get. <laughs> I've created a monster. Oh. There we go. That's brilliant. That. So thank you, Colin, from Middlesex in the UK. I really, really, really love all these things. They're brilliant. Thank you so much. In fact, I'm even going to keep the cardboard tube because you never know when they come in handy. So I hope you enjoyed this selection of stuff. And uh, there's only one thing left to do. And you know what it is? I can't hear you. That's right. Put the pins in the map. <laughs> Put the pins in the map. <laughs> so I'll be doing that now. Okay, first up, Richard Goulstone from Auckland, New Zealand. This is the first pin, it's a pink one. And it's going in the first pin for New Zealand and there's Auckland right there. So that's you, Richard, Richard Goulstone. This one's Stan Flatters in Grantham, UK. So sticking it in to UK, it's a bit crowded. I'll put it, uh, where can I put it? <laughs> Cheek, there we go. It's that one there, Stan, below the white one. That's yours, Stan. Next one is simply Dixie from London. Well, London's a big place, but on this map it's not. And I'll try to get it into London. Here we go. Brussels, no. <laughs> hey, that white one there, the bottom one, Dixie. That's yours. Another one from, guess where, England. Only this is Devon. Remember I used to go for school holidays and stuff. South West Coast. So I'll put that in there. Wonderful. This is crazy because I didn't realise I'm practically all from England. Colin Patterson from Middlesex in the UK. I've got him a little pearly white one here. Uh, Middlesex something up here somewhere like this. Colin Patterson. There you go, mate. It's that one. It's off white, that one there. Pam Hall. Another one in England, West Midlands. Uh, and this one today is going to be this like strange little metallic green. Uh, West Midlands is going to be up here somewhere like that. That one there, Pam, that's yours, next to the white one. Thank you. Now we've got one last one, and it's the guy in New Jersey. I can't do that accent very well. It's Brian Alloway in New Jersey, in Chats Chatsworth in New Jersey. And I'm going to put this one in. It's a, it's a sort of a grey green one. And I'm putting it in about here for Chatswood. Hopefully this is close. That's yours, Brian, right there. Okay, so another big thank you to everybody that contributed today. It's been a marvellous unboxing experience, and I'm sure there was a lot there of interest, something for everyone. And it's been a great day, and that's a great ending to a day. So thank you very much, everyone. Until next week, I will see you later. Goodbye.